Thank you. Um, so I'm Keenan Walk. I'm the senior media archivist at Lightiron. I'd like to thank LumaForge for inviting me to speak today. Um, I titled this um, uh, Media Archivist versus Entropy because I think it's kind of interesting that when you think about it, um, an archivist's core job is to battle entropy, uh, which is the gradual decline into disorder. Whether you're a media archivist or you're a, a physical assets archivist at the Smithsonian or at a local library with the Dewey Decimal System, you're always trying to create a system of checks and balances in order to alert you to any disorder. Now, archiving is obviously a very broad topic, um, but today what I'm going to try to do is um, outline a few general principles that, when followed, will guarantee the validity of any archive and gives you the best tool set to battle entropy. Um, now, this, uh, these principles work small scale, um, smaller productions, huge giant productions, anything in the middle. Um, it'll work for camera negative, like what I'm going to use in my example today, work for uh, finished files, uh, vacation photos, really anything you've got. Um, so real quick, a little background on uh, both LightIron and myself. Um, we are uh, Panavision's dailies and uh, finishing services arm. Uh, we've got multiple locations across the US. Um, personally, I am based out of our LA office. Um, and we support uh, worldwide productions uh, through all of our services from uh, these facilities. Um, those services are uh, daily services, um, where we'll do uh, customized workflows um, for facilities-based or near-set-based uh, dailies workflow. Uh, we'll create a custom LUT with your final colorist. Uh, we have offline rental space um, in uh, New York and New Orleans. We've got uh, turnkey services available in other cities as well, um, as well as uh, episodic and feature finishing. Uh, 2K, UHD, 4K, 6K, 8K, HDR, Dolby Vision, IMF, J2K, DCP packaging, we've got it. Um, we've got real-time collaboration between our facilities, and we have uh, our theater theaters are available for uh, private screenings as well. And of course, archiving services. Um, we provide archiving uh, with all of our previous services. Um, that can be uh, disk or tape or cloud-based archive. We'll also work with you to help uh, migrate your, any existing archive into a metadata-rich cloud archive. Um, and we are a Netflix preferred vendor with their, uh, their content hub um, archive. We've been having a close collaboration with them. Um, we're actually one of a, only a very small handful of companies that um, has been greenlit to do OCF upload into their uh, content hub. Personally, myself, in my role as a senior media archivist, um, I oversee the worldwide archive and verification. And I've done over 200 feature films and episodic seasons in the past six years. Um, this includes camera and sound negative from um, from set, from production, as well as any other proxies and stuff created during the production um, into the archive. Pulls from that archive for VFX pulls and conform. Um, and final color DI assets, um, all of, of these projects as well. Um, these are some of the, the titles we've worked on the past few years. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this talk may get uh, a, little bit a little bit nerdy, a little technical. Um, somebody out there is probably going to tune out. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is to deliver this so that everybody from DITs and archivists all the way up to uh, content owners and producers can understand it. So if you don't understand any of the tiny pieces, that's okay. I'm hoping to present this in a way that's a little bit bigger as well so you can understand kind of the general philosophy. Um, and again, this works for all scales, all data types, um, you know, disk now, future, cloud, et cetera. So you can tell you've got a good archive based on how confident you are that you can delete everything not in your archive, right? Um, so in order to really have that confidence, you need two different things in your verification workflow. Uh, both are pretty straightforward, and I'm going to use an example to illustrate these. And if you can achieve both of them, you can guarantee the validity of your archive. The first is data integrity verification. And the second is what I call omission verification. I'll explain these. So let's go through a, uh, a workflow. Again, I'm going to use uh, camera negative for my example, but again, for anything. So shoot on the camera, it'll offload to a RAID from the magazine, um, and hopefully your offload was done with a uh, utility such as one of these that will create a checksum, digital fingerprint of your file. And you could have any number of copies. Um, you could have your, uh, your on-set RAID copying to a shuttle drive, shuttle drive copying to a near-set RAID where your dailies are created. You could have any number of copies uh, before ultimately you write into your archive, which could be a tape, uh, could be a master protection set of tapes, could be some sort of cloud storage, Glacier S3, whatever you've got, could be a disk if you really want. Uh, but for the purposes of this uh, discussion, I'm just going to represent the archive, whatever that is, with this tape. 
Um, and if it is a tape, then in fact that last copy can be used as a manifest for listing what's on it. So you've got all these different checksums all along the process. Um, but in order to verify the archive, all you really need to do is compare the latest versus the earliest. And then, of course, everything else in the middle, you know, is, is still okay. Now, you see we have labeled this as a hero checksum. This is an important concept at LightIron. Uh, a hero checksum we define as a checksum generated um, as early as you possibly can. So in this case, the media was offloaded. A checksum was generated during that offload, and that's referred to as a hero. Um, if this uh, checksum didn't exist and only the second one did, um, we would still verify against that because that's the earliest that happened, but we would not consider that a hero checksum. If this uh, magazine was offloaded using like a find or drag and drop, and then after that a checksum was generated, that would also not be considered a hero checksum. So a hero checksum is this idea that a checksum is generated the earliest you possibly can, um, and then we always try to verify against that, of course. Um, so the earliest isn't necessarily the hero, and the latest isn't always your right, or the record of your right into the archive. For example, if you did write to LTO, um, and then you shipped your LTO to a facility or some other location, you would then need to rescan the archive, generating new checksums to make sure nothing has changed and verify against your hero. Um, now, real quick, I want to uh, focus on uh, these checksum files here. Um, as you probably know, not all checksums are created equal. They come in all sorts of different flavors or algorithms. So for the longest time, MD5 was the standard. Um, and it was really the only algorithm that was used to create uh, data verification checksums. Um, and recently, um, XXHash has come out. Uh, DITs and others began using this, but weren't necessarily aware of the rest of the process down the line. They were just focused on verifying their own archive. So when we were trying to verify the archive later, it wasn't matching it against the XX hash. So of course, we uh, have to pivot. And as long as you've got the same algorithm all the way through, um, you're going to be OK. Um, so if you, uh, you know, just talk with the rest of the chain as you're getting set up so that everyone is aware of which, which algorithm it's using. And that'll give you the most uh, efficient strategy, really, to making sure you've got your data integrity. Um, so again, so that's uh, data integrity verification. Um, and real quick, because XX hash has become so popular recently, I want to talk about it really quick against MD5. Now, MD5 is MD5 is MD5 is MD5 is MD5. On any system or implementation, if you run an MD5 on it, you're always going to get back the same string, um, assuming the file hasn't changed, of course. Um, now, that's not necessarily the case with XXHash. Um, with XXHash, if all that is referred to is XXHash and then the, the hash string, um, that could actually be referring to one of two different algorithms. XX hash 32 or, or 64. And I believe they're thinking about doing a 128 as well. It's a, it's a newer algorithm. It's still in development. Um, so to start with, uh, it can be 32 or 64. Uh, another thing that's different between XX hash um, and MD5 is that the output requires encoding before you can save your hash string. Um, and there's different ways of doing that encoding. There's little endian and big endian. So there's two separate ways you can encode your hash string. And separately, there's even a seed value within the algorithm that could be any integer that you specify. Um, and that can, that can be different. So you've got all these different variables, all of which generate different strings, and all of which are technically valid XX hash checksums for the same file that hasn't changed. So if you're going to use XX hash, you just need to be aware of these variables ahead of time. Um, now, that all being said, there is a standardization effort in progress that is Focusing on this, 64 big endian seed zero. The uh, utilities I mentioned earlier all use this, I believe. Uh, but again, just so that you're aware of this as a potential pitfall, um, you just need to, you know, you have to make sure that you're using the same uh, checksum algorithm all the way through. So that's data integrity verification. Uh, but if you don't have any data, then there's no integrity with which to verify. So that gets us into the other thing, which is omission verification. It's pretty straightforward. You get a directory listing of the array that had everything on it. You get a directory listing of your archive. And you just go through and you make sure all the files are there. It's more or less straightforward. But if a file isn't there, you're going to want to be alerted about it. And checking hashes all day long, you're never going to notice this. Um, now, if your files are also there, you can also run into an issue if your directory structure is different. Um, this happens pretty commonly. I think we've all done this. We'll make a copy of our vacation folders or whatever to another drive, and then we'll change our structure over here, and then we can't go back and find what we we're looking for later. We always want to say that if, you know, once you write your archive, you don't want to change your structure at all, because when you're trying to verify, you're going to run into some issues. So uh, that's pretty straightforward. That's the omission verification part. Um, and so if you put everything together, um, the full picture, looks like this. 
We got the existence of a hero checksum, verifying against it all the way through. Uh, we got your omission verification, making sure you have all of your files. Um, and again, this can be, this was camera negative, but you could replace these with whatever your files are, and whatever your archive is, and whatever your workflow is. The same principles will apply to whatever you're doing. Uh, wrapping up, uh, we, have a, we have a kind of a saying at Lightiron that not all post is created equal. Um, so when someone tells you that something is verified, what does that mean? Um, does, that, does their verification workflow include uh, both data integrity and omission verification? Um, do you know that the uh, same hash algorithm was used all the way through? Uh, did they just check at the last step and then there's a different algorithm at the beginning and they didn't decide to go back and re-verify everything? Um, and was there a hero checksum that they were verifying against the entire time? Um, and this is probably one of the most important ones is the hero checksum because if you don't have any of these other things, if you have a hero checksum, then at any point in the future, you can always go back and verify against it. Now, I'm not doing the world's archiving, um, but if I was a producer or a content owner, these are the concepts that I would want to be familiar with, and these are the things that I would ask my post house about. Um, because if you can create a system uh, that adheres to all of these principles, then you can guarantee an archive uh, that has effectively defeated entropy, at least until the sun expands. Um, so if you have any questions, my uh, email address is here, keenan.mock at lightiron.com, um, and I'll be around afterwards as well if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you.